Hello and welcome to the big picture. The atmosphere of religious intolerance, which has seen a sharp rise in the last several months, has been a cause for serious concern in the country. This has led to a situation where it was even impinging on the functioning of the parliament as we witnessed in the last session. However, the strong statement, strongest since he became the Prime Minister, pledging to act strongly against any criminal violence, has come from Prime Minister Narendra Modi. His statement came during his address at a Catholic congregation here in the capital yesterday. The Prime Minister's promise to ensure complete freedom of faith and that everyone has undeniable right to retain or adopt any religion of their choice has been welcomed widely. This unequivocal assurance had been looked forward to by the country for some time now. Now that it has come in no uncertain language, will we see a more harmonious atmosphere in the country? And will it serve as a warning to elements who have been fomenting hatred and spreading tensions and violence? We will discuss all this today with Rakesh Sinha, Director India Policy Foundation and an RSS ideologue, Kamal Faruqi, former Chairman Delhi Minorities Commission, John Dayal, past National President, All India Catholic Union, Professor Jodhka, Sociologist at the Centre for the Study of Social Systems, JNU, and Sheila Bhatt, Senior Editorial Director, News, Redrift.com. Welcome to all of you. Mr. Rakesh Sina, how do you look at this statement of uh, the <coughs> Prime Minister, which is the strongest statement as far as on this issue of, you know, communal harmony and religious intolerance are concerned? I think uh, whatever Prime Minister spoke, that was need of the hour. Why I say this, is, this was the need of the hour? Because there was a huge propaganda disproportionate to the events and incidents. I don't say that these events were not important, they should not be controlled, they should be condemned. But the disproportionate propaganda, not in the country, but this, was, this propaganda reached to New York Times editorial. I think a small space in New York Times needs a big event. But the editorial on certain attacks on five churches, which were condemnable, which was which were condemned, which should not have happened. But the editorial in New York Times and Obama's statement in United States of America created a situation that, and that propaganda also added that Indian Prime Minister is silent. The part of the propaganda was the Prime Minister is silent. It was projected as if the Prime Minister, government, BJP and larger Sangha Parivar and more larger Hindutva movement are against the existence of minority in India. This was against the tradition of Indian civilization, Indian culture and also the ideology and practices of the RSS and Sangha Parivar. We believe, I mean, Sangha belief, so believes that in the, this is a civilizational nation where the religion is a matter of personal faith. Any, everybody should have right to retain the religion and adopt any religion whenever he or she likes. But this, this right we, we have not got from the constitutionally. This is the civilizational right. Even before the, That's what the Prime Minister even, says. even before the formulation of this constitution, we, we had this right. So India is secular not because Indians, there is a term secularism no, no, we'll in the constitution. To, we'll so just I am finishing this sentence. Yes. India is secular because the majority of the country in this in this country have DNA of secularism. The secularism in the DNA of no, the majority. Okay, of the that, okay that's fine. The, but you you say that this this statement was necessary in the context of what had what had happened. The internationalization of what you are saying. Yes, the, the propaganda of the uh, John. John, yeah. you think that uh, you know. What Rakesh Sinha says is interesting. He says that the Prime Minister had to do, make this statement because of the kind of propaganda which had gone on all over the country, extremely disproportionate to what was happening. Mr. Narendra Modi was our guest. We were the ones, I, I could say particularly, who had been commenting on his silence since he became Prime Minister on a series of acts of violence of various types, structural and physical. He spoke, and he spoke powerfully in a very structured written speech. Of course, he broke to no questions, but the fact he spoke, <coughs> I welcome it. I mean, I am, as a Christian, grateful that the Prime Minister of the country spoke. Did he address all our fears and all our doubts? It remains to be seen, and it remains to be seen because we have never said it's the government that is killing people. We have never said it's the government that's doing it. We have said the government is not acting and others do it. And now we have to see if the government 
at the state level, at the village level, government's representatives, the collector, the superintendent of police, the SHO, will they act? And more important than that, will these groups, which are the cause of such grief, will they cease and desist? Will I see the larger Hindu Tupariwa, will I see the head of the RSS say that we respect what the Prime Minister I has think, spoken? Uh, I think um, Rakesh Sinha has uh, you know, spoken on their behalf, I would, I would think, what, when, what he said. But to your, as far as your concerns are concerned, his speech, I'm reading from his speech, three, one, just three sentences, he's using my government. He says, my government will ensure that there is complete freedom of faith and that everyone has the undeniable right to retain or adopt the religion of his her, or her choice without coercion or undue influence. My government will not allow any religious group belonging to the majority or the minority to incite hatred against others overtly or covertly. My government will act, act strongly in this regard. We cannot accept violence against any religion. This is he, has been, he has been, you know, there is unequivocal. But, but no, 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 no. These are inherent in the constitution of India on which he has taken an oath. No, but, you, but, but, but I want to say something. No, but you are saying that in the last several months you have been waiting, you, you have been concerned about his silence. Yeah. Now he has broken his silence. But of course, therefore we have welcomed it. We have welcomed it very warmly. But what I am saying is two things I wish he had possibly said differently. The fact is that he's sworn to protect the constitution and these are guarantees of the constitution and in fact of civilization itself. The second thing is minority and majority. There is no equivalence. There is no equivalence. We have never said the Hindus are attacking us. Never. We have never said the Hindu community attacks or the Hindu faith attacks. Never. We have said Hindutva, which is a political situation. And that was, I, I think in future, I would like to hope that there will be occasion where it will be clear that the RSS, the Vishwa Hindu Parishad, the Bajrang Dal, the Shep Sena, all these little groups that keep on being born every day, that they will say, all right, the Prime Minister has spoken, no more coercion, no more violence, we will all live in peace. Okay. Just I'll one come, one no, one let, let me get Mr. Faruqi so that he can re respond to both of them together. Mr. Faruqi, how would you look at this? See, the, this statement, as John was saying, that mm -hmm. you know, this was a, the biggest accusation against the Prime Minister all these nine months was that he was silent when all these things were going on. Now that he has come out openly, unequivocally, does that give you some kind of a, uh, assurance? Grish, when uh, in May 2014, he said the same kind of words, we believed him. In, uh, in from, uh, on 15th August when he said, we believed him. Even yesterday when he said, we are believing that he is going to take some action against all those people, which are not the uh, out of proportion, which my brother has just now said, that out of proportion has been said. Never. Disproportionate. The, never in, or during the last 20 years, if I say correctly, so many things have been said so quickly, so rapidly against the uh, minorities that we were simply aghast why he is not talking about it. Because this is what actually he has made the commitment. I fully agree with Rakesh Bhai because this basically, as far as he, he, uh, the, the entire philosophy of the country is concerned, from where even the constitution has taken uh, uh, the cue out of it it, 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 it speaks what Mr. Prime Minister has said yesterday. He has not said anything new. It is what actually John, John said rightly that basically what Mr. Modi has said, this is what actually the constitution says, this is what my uh, civilization says. But it was not happening during the last uh, seven, eight, nine months. In fact, day in, day out, we were getting such, uh, such bad kind of statements, which even Rakesh Bhai would not be in a position to repeat it again and again. And today the RSS people even, they, they said it uh, uh, so bluntly that what do you think of out of our men? Are they the uh, women? Are they the factory of creating, b producing the children? This is what actually is the state of affair in fact. I am happy that Prime Minister has said but it will not be enough. Girish, it will not be enough. Action has to uh, uh, be there. Action whosoever, has to follow. Whosoever is responsible, whether it is the Muslims or the Christians or Hindus, anybody who is trying to uh, uh, create the problems in the country, they have to be dealt with very strongly, whether they belong to the topmost uh, organization or they belong to any minority. Yes. Now, I have this, uh, one objection to what John, John Dell said. His assumption is that Prime Minister's speech was a warning to the RSS. Second assumption is that not Hindus, not Hindus, but the things have, uh, are being done by the Hindutva, the political environment of Hindutva. He didn't say it was warning no, to us. No, he didn't say his, that. His, his, his version is that now they will not do. Now they will not do. No, I'm hoping. I'm hoping. No, means they were doing. 
I'm giving one instance. There was a theft in a school. That was a case of theft, principal said. And 300 thefts took place in the so-called, I am very sorry that uh, we are criminalizing the, even the theft. That the issue of theft was criminalized in the, in the series of the church. One, one place, there was, a, there was a blast of the cylinder and there was fire. The, the police investigation said, if you are not believing police, police is not an RSS creation. Judiciary is not the RSS creation. And the case of theft was criminalized in such a way that at the inter I, I saw in the international press that, that the, the, the Christian, uh, Christian schools are attacked. This is, the, this is the way you are hampering the democracy. Prime Minister and the, the Finance Minister both willy-nilly yesterday admitted that these attacks on the churches have been I'm not, I, cause for I'm not objecting no, that. They, they were at, it is not just the Delhi school. No, it's happening in Chhattisgarh. No, no, I, I, I'm just talking that the, the, a particular case of the theft in the Delhi school, where it was said that it's HRD minister visited, but I'm sure, call the, I'm sure the problem they, is not just they, they whether creating, it was theft They are creating more panic. I said that such any attack should be condemned as there should be action. No, but don't it, create panic in the country. No, don't no, create this, panic this, in the this international level. This particular thing, I don't know whether that is the cause for the Prime Minister to have come out so openly. Pro Professor Jodhka, Professor Jodhka, you know, these kind of very strong yes. statements from, from a Prime Minister coming from a very, uh, you know, coming at a, at a congregation of, a, of, of the Catholic community, what kind of impact does it have on the society? Of course, it's welcome, no doubt about it. Uh, and this is not something which is kind of a favour to anyone. These are constitutional obligations of any elected government. I think the point that uh, uh, the person from RSS is making is also very important. That why is it that you know even a theft becomes an issue or is communalized? I think that's where the problem lies. Uh, that is the problem of trust deficit. And I think that's where, because it is now the ruling party, it has to take an extra kind of effort to make sure that minorities trust it. And that is something which, again, as, as has been earlier told by people, that it would come through action. Nobody wants to be treated as minority. Nobody wants to be uh, targeted as, 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 as non-Indian or somebody who, who is less than an Indian. So this is not the minorities who want to be, to be minorities. They want to be citizens. They want to be part of this country. And this is something which is enshrined in our constitution. And it's not a question of tolerance. I think the language that was used by the RSS spokesperson is very good. It's a question of rights and that there is a difference between tolerance and rights. Everyone has rights, everyone has equal rights, every individual has rights, people have the right to, to, to practice faith. I think these two uh, words need to be very, very uh, central to the way we deal with the minority question today. One is the question of trust. The trust has to be won by the people who are in power of those who are on the margins. It's not the other way around. I think they have to make sure, they have to make sure that nobody tries to communalize it, it doesn't even come to their mind. And of course, this is something very, very important. It is something which needs to be stated because we are a very diverse country. We are a country where there are problems of all kinds and these problems will keep coming. It's not the problems are going to end. But the point is that we have to keep stressing on these points. And they are not new problems necessarily. One can't really blame this government for everything. But at the same time, this government has the responsibility of building the trust. And that trust will come through statements like this, but also through action. Statements are very, very important. And the Prime Minister officials need to keep making these statements all the time so that there's a general atmosphere of trust. Okay. Uh, Sheila, you know, why do you think the Prime Minister made this statement? Yeah, it's a good question. I was about to share that. You know, very interesting. Uh, first of all, I think he's cutting the losses. He thinks that, that Delhi be bygone and let me go th and think beyond the Delhi losses. I think he's taking stock of the situation and going ahead with confidence. So this, if you read this fully, not just what you read, which is which has come more in the, the press, pitch, yeah. but if you see, he has taken the entire issue a little bit on the higher orbit. He is talking majorly and he has Viewing his thinking around the Hague International Conference right. on Religions, so he is taking the entire issue of uh, that uh, he is talking in Sanskrit, uh, some Veda and other things. So I think that shows that he is going now. Delhi losses are gone. He then second he, when he, is, he has chosen to look at the timing uh, just before the budget. Third, what even now in everybody's mind, you, me or public mind, what Narendra Modi stands for, development. So he understands that my development agenda must not get diluted, diffused. 
So, this uh, speech first he is taking it to the different orbit then he is talk he wants de it is very sure that he wants development to be the agenda now and a talk of the town when budget is coming and three it's so you are saying that it's, it is for majorly i would say the way he has written the speech and spoken is majorly addressed to international audience i feel more than us you, so, so there were political compulsions be, that's what are you trying to say i would say he is, he is trying to uh, prepare a situation for political win win situation i would say my development agenda should be first, let international community just shut up, uh, we know, uh, we have a heritage background and everything, India is committed, I am committed. So I think overall he is going beyond Delhi. So in, in fact, you are, you, are, you are endorsing what Rakesh Sinha says, that you know he was forced into a situation where he had to react. He had to come out with such a strong statement. See, because statement. see, Girish, it's obvious because it's it's a very important statement. It was desirable. One would I would agree if somebody says it's little late in the day. Yes, but beyond that, you know, the entire issue of this attack on the church or Garvapshi and all that other Hindutva noises, we don't like it. But that all issue should be addressed in a democratic and a functioning country like us by a institutional mechanism. There no. should be police, there should be judiciary. So, I think there is a limited purpose of Prime Minister's such statement, I feel personally, that on the ground, what <laughs> makes the difference is police and the justice. Absolutely. So, uh, so I think it's good, whatever has happened is, I mean, Prime Minister's statement is welcomed, but I think it serves a big, bigger purpose of him, uh, Prime Minister only of uh, putting development agenda first. Okay, Rakesh, no, my question is this, you know, as, as Sheila rightly points out, the weight of a prime minister yes. talking on, on on these kind of things obviously will be there and will be felt. But the, on the ground, what happens depends on state governments, state administration, district administration. We'll keep that aside. But as we have seen since the last 24 hours since he made that statement, there have been very adverse reactions from a certain section of people who, who had seen him as their mascot. You think there is a problem there? Look, uh, because are, if you see the social media, if you see even the the kind of reactions which have come from people who don't like, who, who didn't like the Prime Minister talking this language. Basically, we are not striking the real issue and genuinely, genuinely the basic issue of the society. It is not the few statements of undesirable and condemnable statements of the leaders who are not acknowledged at the national level. They are, they are acknowledged because the BJP is in the government. Had they not been BJP in the government, their statement would not have get, got the uh, small place the, in the... They would paper. not have found the light of the day. No, so, huh, light of the day. Second thing what I want to point out, RSS genuinely wants, not from today, right from the beginning, right from the, even the before RSS, Mahatma Gandhi, wanted a disco, sociological discourse on conversion. Because Hindus don't believe in conversion. So there should be debate on conversion. The, everyone should have unlimited right to retain the religion and to adopt any religion. Nobody can co question it. Nobody should question it. Nobody, even if someone questions, Indian society will not support him. Because Indian society goes by the civilizational tradition. The civilizational tradition is the diversity of religion, equal status of religion. It is the land where Dayananda Saraswati debated in Kasi with 300 pundits on the, against the idol worship. He was not attacked. So we cherish that uh, no, tradition. But what's the so point? what I say, ki RSS generally demands if the Congress government had formulated in seven states anti-conversion law, largely Congress government, except one Gujarat, Urissa was a Congress government, Madhya Pradesh was a Congress government, then why not there should be a central anti-conversion law just to, not to, in, uh, just to snatch any right of adopting any religion, but to stop the fall means to convert the person. That is the point. See, if you read, if you read the Prime Minister's statement, it works both ways. It, you know, he is also talking of, he is talking as, as uh, uh, she was pointing or Sheila was pointing out the human rights declaration at the Hague on, you know, but he has added coercion or undue influence, which is not there in that statement. Yes, John? No, I wanted to point out a very simple thing condemn all Christian conversions, in which case kindly explain why there is such pressure, such violence, such structural violence against the Muslim community because they cannot be accused 
of forcible and fraudulent conversions mm -hmm. by Christian missionaries working under the behest of Italy or somewhere else. How do you explain that then? It has got nothing to do with conversion. It's got nothing to do with the discussion on conversion. The Supreme Court decision is there. Six states have the law. They have never been able to really send anybody to jail because it doesn't exist. There is no fraudulent or forcible conversion at all. It is impossible. A pastor is alone in a village where every villager is a Hindu, where the policeman is a Hindu, the judicial officer is a Hindu, the panchayati officer is a Hindu. Would he dare? Would he dare coerce? He'll be lynched. Would he dare offer money? If he were to offer money, the money would be consumed in six weeks and some richer Hindu could come and offer a hundred times more. These things are myths okay. to demonize religious minorities. Okay. Come, uh, Faruqi? Mr. Faruqi? Yeah. So I, the, the point made by uh, Rakesh Sina, now that, you know, these, these issues, the, the issues of conversion, mm -hmm. Prime Minister has taken a stand. And now you think that there needs to be a debate on, on these issues now, no, on, is, on conversion? No, no, you think is, that, you, do you, or do you think that the Prime Minister has made a stand clear? We should stop you know, discussing, debating this more anymore. Unfortunately, this is the game plan of RSS, unfortunately, that they want to uh, get into all those kind of things so that they could have some uh, anti-conversion law in the parliament and then having uh, totally uh, banning the kind of uh, the, uh, my freedom of any religion, in fact. And uh, the, if you read this with, with this uh, uh, conversion, you can also read what Mr. Mohan Bhagwat has said about the country's philosophy. One God, one religion, oneness, this is a unity. Are we thinking about that? If that is the concept, if this is the philosophy, obviously it is not acceptable to me at all. Where did he say? He said it. Oh my God, Where if you are not read it. In the Indian philosophy is... No, 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 he has sir, said it in so many RSS, words. RSS, he RSS, RSS, said RSS so many words. Right from Hedivar to... Bhai. Na, just Bharuki sahab, this is wrong. No, I'm, right I'm, from I'm telling you. To Mohan I'm telling you Hindu. Ekam Satyam Bhattra 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 You don't I'm, accept... You, you believe in I'm one God. You. Hindus don't believe in one God. Majority community don't believe in one God. There can't be. Sir, for Haran's sake, Hindu... He doesn't know Hinduism. Then Mr. Bhagwat does not know. Bhagwat has never said this. Never said... No RSS said one I think we are digressing. Mr. Faruqi, we have 36,000 gods. Mr. Faruqi, Mr. Sina, we are digressing very quickly. We have to wind up Mr. Faruqi very quickly. You are digressing. I am a very responsible... John, I am a very responsible Indian. Uh, Indian, in fact, and I don't uh, say anything which is absolutely on, not on record. You quote the document where I am. Okay. I am saying you three, three days earlier Hindu. Okay. 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 This is okay, Mr. Faruqi. Professor Jodhka, very quickly. Do you think? Professor, Professor Jodhka, do you think that this statement of the Prime Minister will kill Hindu religion? Do you think? Professor Jodhka, do you think that this statement of the Prime Minister will change the discourse in this country in any way? Uh, precisely, I mean, we have to see reality on ground. And I think uh, there is a connection between when we talk about religious minorities, conversions, etc., etc., and when we talk about development and governance. I think if we foreground development and governance, and that's something that everybody wants. Everybody wants the country to function properly. Everybody wants to, in a sense, uh, do well in life. They want their children to get good education. They want jobs. They want uh, some kind of, you know, security and and kind of you know equality of some kind of citizenship status nobody wants to talk about the religion religion is a private affair they are community affairs they practice in whatever they do and we have a constitution these are sacred things you're not question of controversies or debates i mean controversy or debates come when we have any doubts about it indian constitution is very categorical about these things i mean conversion you can talk about conversion but who is stopping you from talking about it we don't we have nobody has stopped ever of, uh, people from talking about conversion but the fact is that the priorities of the government priorities of the party in power have to be development governance welfare fall providing security taking the country forward and that was the agenda during the elections and that's okay. what where we need to come back okay then we start talking about what kind of development who is experiencing development there is a muslim question there's a minority question okay We're mr jodhka we were will... very happy when such a committee was appointed okay that's where the focus is. so we are start. running out of time we are running out of time <coughs> but you know the the discussion uh, sorry john we completely run out of time but it is uh, it is it's good to see that you know 
we can we can discuss these issues in a in a in a atmosphere like this. Hopefully, this this atmosphere will spread across the country, and the statement made by the prime minister will have its impact. But like my panelists said, there has to be some. We have to see on the ground these words being converted into action. We'll wait and watch for that. Thanks to all my guests. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another big picture same time tomorrow. Thank you.